Good morning. I'm Steve Buick, the press secretary to Health Minister Tyler Shandro. Uh, we have Minister Shandro and two other speakers with us today. Uh, names are on the media notice, so I won't go through them, but they are going to be, the speaking order will be Minister Shandro, then Dennis Banks, and then Dr. Mark Joffe. So with that, I'll ask Minister Shandro to start us off. Thank you, Steve, and good morning, everyone. Uh, our testing program here in Alberta has been a critical component of our COVID-19 strategy helping to break the chain of transmission at many different points. And when the pandemic arrived here 11 months ago, we quickly de developed the most dynamic testing program in Canada. And just to go over some of the, the, um, the ways in which we were leaders in testing, we were the first to expand testing to asymptomatic Albertans. And we were the first to roll out testing to com community pharmacies. Testing is integral to our uh, successful border pilot program, the first of its kind. The other provinces have caught up with us in recent months, but we're still number one in total tests per capita since the start of the pandemic. And today we're again, once again, leading the country in testing for COVID-19 variants of concern. To date, we've completed 3.2 million tests for COVID-19, and more than 1.7 million Albertans have been tested at least once. We're now screening the vast majority of positive test results for variants of concern or VOCs and aiming to do all of our uh, new positives in a given day as soon as possible. Our lab teams have done an outstanding work and I want to thank every single staff member involved for the, uh, the dedication and the innovation that they've shown over these last 11 months. Today I'm pleased to announce that we're broadening our efforts, specifically in rapid testing. We were early adopters of rapid testing because we saw the benefits of getting faster results, especially in rural and remote locations and shelters and in outbreak settings. Now, rapid tests can mitigate or prevent outbreaks in areas where we've seen COVID-19 do its worst. To date, more than 1,100 deaths from COVID-19, 65% of the, the total have been in long-term care facilities or supportive living sites. In mid-December, we began using rapid testing at long-term care and designated supportive living facilities to, to test symptomatic residents and, and staff in outbreaks. Rapid testing was, was used on site at these facilities, identifying cases within an hour to speed up the detection of contagious residents and staff. Rapid testing also frees up capacity and it uh, reduces turnaround times for PCR tests, which remain the, the core diagnostic test for, for COVID. A total of 59 positive tests have been identified by rapid tests at these sites in the last two months. And so today I'm pleased to announce that we're expanding our use of rapid testing to to include asymptomatic staff in all long-term care and supportive living facilities in the province. AHS has identified the first sites that will expand their testing as soon as next week. We've also heard directly from operators who are very interested in using rapid screening at their sites as well. One example is Rivera. They're confident that they'll be able to offer this testing to their 3,000 employees here in Alberta at their seven long-term care facilities and 15 retirement residences in the province. They've already started rapid testing in other jurisdictions, including Ontario, and they believe that it's played a vital role in controlling the spread of COVID-19. Now, we hope and expect it will make a difference here in Alberta as well. And let me say this isn't just another policy announcement, it's deeply personal. It's about protecting the most vulnerable Albertans, our parents and our grandparents, including my own. My Baba is, is no longer with us, but she was in long-term care uh, before she died. And I can't imagine what it would have been like for her if she was living there during COVID. And I, I think about her every time I talk about continuing care and her memory guides every decision that I make for the residents of these facilities. So I'm proud of this announcement and proud of the partners who are already lining up to be a part of it. This expansion will 
eventually cover all 36,000 staff in continuing care facilities across the province. The rapid tests will be supplied for free by the government of Alberta, and the tests will be done once a week to start. If the prevalence of positive cases in the surrounding community is 5% or higher, facilities will be asked to increase to twice a week. Anyone who tests positive will be isolated and given a PCR test for confirmation. And this expansion of rapid testing supports our overall COVID-19 strategy to shield those most at risk, to protect lives, to protect livelihoods, and adapt our actions to new evidence as it comes. Now, we and the world are still learning about the effectiveness of these tests on those who have no symptoms. To build on that research, we're supporting a pilot project that's providing 7,000 tests to employers for workplace screening. The project involves approximately 200 workers at Suncor Energy's base plant in Fort McMurray and 125 staff in the First Nation and Métis community of uh, Fort Mackay. These uh, projects are uh, being led by Suncor Energy and the Creative Destruction Labs Rapid Screening Consortium. Uh, CDL is a, a nonprofit organization that is, is working on developing rapid testing plans for workplaces across Canada. Project participants without symptoms are being screened for COVID-19 with rapid tests between, uh, or sorry, rapid tests twice a week for, for 10 weeks. And those who test positive will be isolated and sent for a PCR test to, to confirm the result and um, the ministry will then be notified. In, in this way, workers who have COVID but don't know it can be identified before they infect co-workers or others, which will reduce or prevent outbreaks. Now the, the pilot started a few weeks ago and it will run for a total of 10 weeks. So far, no positive test results have been recorded by the pilot project and CDL and Suncor are running the rapid screening program and will share the data and their experience with the, um, with, uh, the Ministry of Health and Health Canada. And this is a win-win. It will help protect hundreds of workers at one of the largest work sites in the province and support research that will help us better understand the best way to use rapid tests in workplaces as well as other settings. But we need to do more. We're also developing rapid screening programs for other settings, including correctional facilities, shelters, and schools. These programs will be for asymptomatic people, and we're also continuing to expand rapid testing for symptomatic people at COVID-19 assessment centers, including in rural locations where it drastically cuts down the wait time for results. We're working hard every day to increase testing here in Alberta, and uh, every other aspect of our response to the pandemic. We've had real success in getting the numbers down and the result is that we can move forward with a careful staged reopening while we monitor the numbers closely and protect capacity in the healthcare system. Most of all, we're able to move forward because Albertans are doing the right thing. It's working and it will keep on working if we all stick to it. So thank you very much, and I'll now invite Dennis Banks from Suncor to provide more information on their work in this exciting new project. Uh, thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you, and I'd like to take an opportunity to thank Minister Shandro and, to, and Dr. Joffrey for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to be, with here, be here with you today to talk about the rapid screening pilots we've re recently kicked off here in Alberta. This work began last August when the Creative Destruction Lab invited Suncor along with 11 large Canadian companies to come together to identify cost-effective rapid COVID screens, run pilots in the workplace, and develop a playbook, a compilation of, of our collective lessons on how to implement rapid screening in various environments, offices, arenas, retail, factories, and industrial settings. The consortium is an unprecedented collaboration amongst businesses, researchers, and government 
working together with a singular public interest, our objective to develop a cost-effective system for safely reopening the economy during the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the onset of the pandemic, we've taken steps to protect our people so that we can continue to provide energy that society needs. Rapid COVID screening permits us to quickly detect and isolate new cases and gives us the opportunity to break the chain of transmission. This is just one more layer of protection for our workforce and for the communities near our operations. Rapid screening is in addition to all of the other steps we've taken, including safety protocols on wearing masks, washing our hands, maintaining physical distancing, as well as PCR testing, contact tracing, and when the time comes, vaccination. All layers of protection will be required for some time to slow the spread of COVID-19. Our first pilot at our base plant north of Fort McMurray is focused on essential workers in one of our control rooms. Screening is being performed by healthcare workers following Health Canada and AHS guidance. We also extend an offer to pilot screening in the First Nations and Métis communities of Fort Mackay. This is a community we have worked with for many years. We are pleased that Chief Mel Granjam and Métis President Ron Quintal were open to hosting a pilot in their community. In Fort Mackay, we are screening community workers, healthcare staff, elderly caregivers, maintenance staff, and even bus drivers twice a week for 10 weeks. Given the size and scale of our operations in Wood Buffalo, we'll look forward to, to scaling and extending rapid screening to other locations. I'm the vice president of the uh, Suncor Refinery here in Sherrod Park, not far from where I stand here today. One of the things that concerned me is that I, have, I do have a limited number of wonderful people that are trained and qualified to conduct critical work. For example, my control room operators and, and our power engineers. The potential to have a number of these skilled workers unavailable because they've tested positive for COVID-19 or have come in close contact with a positive case has the potential to impact our operations and the ability to keep critical, or at least keep a critical energy infrastructure in this province running. Being able to add rapid screening into more workplaces and industries in addition to the existing protocols will provide an additional layer of protection and will be key to reopening more of the economy and keep businesses running safely. In addition to Suncor's two pilots, the other CDL consortium members are leading pilots, pilots in other provinces. We need to learn how to effectively do rapid screening in many different work settings. For example, large office buildings, arenas, stores, and factories. The consortium is developing a workplace rapid screening playbook for government, for the public, and for industry to use. In this way, we can protect more workers across many more sectors. We can accomplish a great deal when we work together. These rapid screenings pilots are a good demonstration of how collectively industry and governments are working together to address COVID-19. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I want to thank the government of Alberta for their assistance and collaboration on these pilots. I'd like to acknowledge and thank all of the frontline workers across the province, the healthcare workers, the transportation industry, whether aviation, rail, truck drivers, to people working anywhere in the supply chain to keep our grocery stores stocked, and all the workers across the country who are keeping essential services running. I thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Banks and Minister Shandro. And congratulations to Suncor for the incredible work you're doing to deploy rapid testing to ensure the health and safety of your workforce and the community. We ended 2020 with a commitment to expand our use of rapid testing.
for COVID-19, and in particular to rural and remote locations, as well as in long-term care and designated supportive living facilities, and in homeless shelters, which are amongst the highest risk sites for outbreaks. I am pleased to say that we are delivering on this commitment, as our teams at Alberta Precision Laboratories have now deployed rapid testing at 33 COVID-19 assessment centers in communities across the province, as well as at seven homeless shelters in Calgary, Red Deer, and Edmonton. And as we announced before Christmas with Minister Shandro, we've also rolled out mobile testing teams that are equipped with rapid testing capabilities to provide on-site testing at long-term care and designated supportive living facilities. These teams have visited dozens of facilities across AHS's Edmonton and Central Zones, helping to protect seniors who are the most vulnerable to the virus. We continue to work with our private sector partners on expanding the use of these mobile facilities in more communities. And with today's announcement, we are also adding a new layer of protection for the residents of continuing care facilities across Offering routine screening of staff in these facilities using rapid testing will allow for early detection of COVID-19, even in those with no symptoms. This will go a long way to, protect, to preventing outbreaks from starting and ensuring that those who care for the most vulnerable members of our community are not inadvertently introducing the virus into their workplaces. Rapid point-of-care testing is now an important pillar in Alberta's overall COVID-19 testing program, which continues to be among the best in the country, if not the world, in terms of the proportion of our population that has been tested. Our medical scientific staff have done outstanding work in evaluating the effectiveness of the point of care te rapid testing systems, ensuring that we incorporate them into our provincial testing program in a way that maximizes our ability to prevent the spread of the virus in our communities. We still have a lot of work to do as we continue to identify new sites and investigate additional uses for rapid point of care testing in Alberta. But it's incredible to think that just one year ago, we were just developing our first test for COVID-19 as we witnessed this pandemic beginning to sweep across the globe. We have made amazing progress in understanding this virus in such a short period of time. And I would like to recognize the thousands of staff from Alberta Health Services and Alberta Precision Laboratories for the incredible hard work and the very long hours that they've put into our pandemic response. It is thanks to their hard work that we have now completed more than 3 million tests for COVID-19 on approximately 1.7 million people here in Alberta since the beginning of the pandemic. As a doctor, I'd like to close by reminding everyone that we all have a part to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. Wear a mask, try to maintain that six feet of physical distancing, and clean your hands often. Stay home if you're feeling unwell, and go to the AHS website to complete the self-assessment to see if you should be tested. Everyone's actions make a difference, and Albertans have done a great job beating back this virus over the last short while. Thank you for your time today. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks, Dr. Jaffe. Uh, we'll open it up to questions. There are a number of people waiting on the line, so I'll ask you to keep your questions brief and limit it to one. So we'll just do one question per uh, call. And can we start with the first one, please? First is James Keller with the Globe and Mail. Go ahead, James. Hi, this is a question for the, the minister. Um, today, Health Canada approved this idea of having a uh, the Pfizer vials count for six doses. What do you think about that? And given your previous warnings about the uh, unreliability of getting that sixth dose every time, what will that do to uh, Alberta's vaccine plan and its supply? 
Um, thanks for the question, James. Uh, it, it is frustrating. I think we made it clear to the um, to the federal government and to Health Canada that uh, you know everybody gets the best training, everybody get is using the the, um, the the right syringe. We're only going to get that six dose, seventy five percent of the time max. Um, so it means that uh, the provinces are in the end because the federal government has contracted out. Um, on, on the basis of doses, not vials. So it means that the provinces are going to end up not getting as, as many doses, I think. Um, but um, what we're going to um, make sure that um, we are going to continue to commit to Albertans. We're going to get their vaccines to them as quickly as possible. As soon as we, we receive them, we are going to make sure that we continue focusing on uh, the, uh, the smallest amount of waste as possible. Um, and uh, that's our commitment to Albertans, and we're going to uh, make sure that um, the folks who are providing the vaccines too. Right now, it's it's a lot of folks, uh, mostly for phase one, because it's healthcare workers and the residents of long-term care, and uh, their staff. Um, so a lot of the vaccines to date have been through um, through the, the amazing folks at AHS, the, the public health nurses. Um, and whether uh, the vaccines provided by them in the future are when we start rolling out, including our family physicians and our um, pharmacists as well, making sure that they have the resources necessary to ensure that they're provided as quickly as possible to Albertans and with the smallest amount of waste. Okay. Thanks, James. We'll go to the next one. Next is Kevin Nimick with CTV. Go ahead, Kevin. Hi there, another question for the Minister. Your department announced unexpectedly on Saturday morning that youth sports teams could resume in a limited capacity on Monday after youth sports hockey players and parents organized protests. This comes after restaurants and hair salons were granted the ability to reopen after several of them publicly broke the public health orders and did it anyways. Are your health decisions governed by science or governed by public pressure? No, Kevin, they're, they're governed by the recommendations that we get from the, the public health officials in the ministry and the, the work that we do in, in sitting down, looking at the evidence, making sure that when we develop this stepwise approach that we are doing a few things. And they're very important uh, parts of this stepwise approach, making sure that in between each step, we have a three-week window where we can look at that evidence, making sure that we're seeing whether cases are continuing to rise or are continuing to fall, making sure that uh, for each of these activities that are affected by the restrictions in the four stages as they are eased, there are still restrictions for sports. There are still restrictions for restaurants. But what we need to do in each of these steps is looking at the levels of risk within each of these activities and managing the um, uh, managing those risks in the stepwise approach, that's what's guiding our decisions here. Thanks. We'll go to the next question. Right. Yep. Next is Kieran Levitt with the Toronto Star. Go ahead, Kieran. Hi, Minister. Uh, Justin Trudeau today said that Ottawa has shipped out 19.6 million rapid tests to the provinces. Uh, and he also asked, that these tests do not be allowed to expire. I'm wondering how many tests have expired in Alberta, if any, and how the province is addressing the problem of expiring rapid tests. Well, um, part of the, first of all, whether any have, have expired and then the number that have expired, um, we can get back to you on, on that. Um, I don't have that number off the top of my head, um, but very happy to give that uh, to you. Um, part of, of, of making sure that we have rapid tests going out and being used is, is, is part of the reason behind this, this expansion of, of using rapid tests, not just for um, helping us um, manage and um, even with symptomatic folks, it's difficult to use um, a rapid test for diagnosis. That's why there still has to be the confirmation with the PCR test, remembering that. But um, expanding their, their use in, in a screening purpose as well as, as being used for um, uh, diagnosis for symptomatic folks. So um, we, we, we want to make sure that um, the full allotment that's been provided to Alberta is, is used and used um, uh, as quickly as we can, in particular focusing on where we can protect the most vulnerable. Thanks for that. We'll move to the next one. Next question is from Jesse Wisner with Global TV. Go ahead, Jesse. 
Hi, this question is also for the Minister. Uh, Dr. Hinshaw mentioned yesterday there are cases of new variants being treated in Alberta hospitals. We know there have been several COVID outbreaks at hospitals over the pandemic with the original virus and know these variants are more contagious. Are there any additional precautions being taken or new increased PPE protocols being looked into to avoid possible spread? Well, as, as I said, even in my speaking notes, that we are always looking at new evidence and always adjusting our response to the pandemic based on the new evidence that we see. Uh, with that in mind right now, from my understanding from Dr. Henshaw, is, is that the, uh, the current protocols for infection prevention and, and control is, um, um, is, is, is not even just meant for the, the current strain that we see in Alberta, but also the, the VOCs, the variants of concern. Um, and in particular, the, the two that have uh, come to Alberta. And we're going to, though, make sure that we continue to um, have AHS, make sure that AHS has the resources that it needs to continue to review that, that information. Dr. Hinshaw's office continue to look at that information and that AHS can uh, continue to have the resources it needs to have those infection prevention and uh, control measures. Thanks for that. Uh, let's take two more. I think we just have two waiting in the queue, so we'll take the second last one. Next is Rafi Boutikanian with CBC. Go ahead, Rafi. Hi, this one's for the minister, too. It's a bit of a follow-up to what James Keller was asking about. Now, last time this issue of six doses per vial came up. Minister, you and Dr. Hinshaw mentioned that there was a shortage of those specialized syringes in Alberta, which I guess is something that other jurisdictions are experiencing as well. Can you tell me where the province is at with procuring more of those syringes? Yeah, AHS has procured them. Um, my understanding is there's no shortage in Alberta of those syringes, and we're going to have the syringes that we need for um, for um, uh, in particular, those ones that, that are being recommended to make sure that we can increase the, the number of second doses we get from 50%, as I said, to 75%. It's, but by the way, just remind everybody, this is, is a, a very small minor increase in, in how many more second doses we're going to be getting in these files, right? We are right now getting a second dose out of 50%. This is about going from 50% to 75 okay. Thanks for that, and we'll just take one last question. Final question is Myrna Juchik with Radio Canada. Go ahead, Myrna. Hi, thanks. Uh, my question is for the minister. In your opening remarks, you just said that rapid testing would uh, alleviate pressure and reduce turnover for PCR tests, um, which confuses me a little because you're also saying that P that rapid testing has to be used in combination with, which, um, with PCR tests because we know that there's a lot of false negatives. So if you could expand a little on what you mean by that. Sure, and I, I don't mean for the, the screening, I meant for the, the P, or, um, the, uh, the rapid, sorry, the, the rapid testing that's being done right now in a congregate uh, setting, uh, like a homeless shelter or um, for um, a rural hospital, remote hospital or continuing care. So right now, um, that um, is allevi alleviating some of the pressures on uh, for the wait times for and the turnaround times for getting a PCR test. The reason is if you already have a, a positive result for a symptomatic person from a rapid screening test, then being able to, to test that the PCR test, the process is quicker for the, the folks in APL. And by the way, you know, Dr. Jaffe, um, you know, you thanked, and I guess I did as well in my, my comments, but uh, maybe just for anybody from APL who, who's watching this right now, to echo the comments of Dr. Jaffe, thank you so much for uh, everything you guys are doing, working around the clock to, um, to get these turnaround times um, and, and being so innovative throughout the pandemic uh, at, at Alberta Precision Labs um, to, to be able to um, make sure that uh, our testing regime is, the, um, is, is, is a leader in the country and making sure that we are breaking these chains of transmission through um, the, the amazing work that you're doing. So thank you to those folks. All right. Thanks, Minister. Uh, thanks also to our guests, Mr. Banks and Dr. Jaffe. Uh, and thanks to reporters for limiting to one question and making this work really well. So we'll see you again soon, and thanks again.